uh, everything is live and direct. This is cool. I love it. All right. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Looks like everything's running. All right. This is great. This is great. All right, so with that being said, hopefully everyone can hear me good and also see me. Um, you know, you guys can see the uh, you can see the charts and all that good stuff, right? All right. Let's see here. Everything should be copacetic. Yep. Okay, great. All right. Um, do me a favor, you guys. It's in the trading room. Go over to my... Okay, oh, never mind. Someone, someone's here. Someone's. I want to see if the thing on YouTube is working, and it looks like it is. Outstanding. Outstanding. All right. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Of course, we're doing our live uh, trading room pre-market pulse scan. And I'm simultaneously airing this live on YouTube where they can, you know, hear the audio version instead of me having to do it the hard way that I was doing it and then uploading it to YouTube and all that. This way, it's live and um, people can listen in. Just something new I'm trying around. All right. Hopefully, everyone is doing good. And hopefully, everyone has been noticing all the different things that have been happening in these markets. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's handle the business first so we can have some fun. All right. Looking at the overnight markets, um, as you can see, the bond futures right now are up about 230 seconds and 151.25. Bonds actually, um, they actually came off a bit and that was to be expected. If you've been following along, you know that um, we've been watching the bond picture. Bonds were staying relatively high. They were trying to oscillate between the 154 and the one, I would say, 53 level. We finally broke that. Uh, so now that that level has been broken, it's now starting to drift lower and test the bottom end of that range, so to speak. So the trading range is becoming a little bit more enormous. Uh, as long as it can stay, I'll, I'll say roughly around the one, 150 range, 150-ish, that should be a key support uh, in the bonds. And that should be able to keep the... Um, the interest rate situation in check. So we'll, we'll see how it, how it goes. But um, all things being equal, uh, we could see further further declines getting closer to that 150 handle. Looking at the Dow, the Dow futures are off eight points at 20,863. NASDAQ 100 is up two and a half points at 56.28 and a quarter. Uh, looking at the E mini S and P 500, it is up one and a half points at 2387. The Nikkei is up five at 19,590. Kuro really fell out of bed. It got as low as $43.65 last night uh, before selling now around 45.50. So it's down two and a half cents now. That's quite the price swing. Uh, looking at the dollar index at 98.90. All right, so it got into that 98 handle, just like I told you that it was threatening to do. Uh, looking at the currencies overnight, we got the Aussie down seven pips at 73.87. The pound sterling is up 13 pips at 129.48. And the euro is off about 20 pips at 109.80. Trying to hold that 109.110 level. Uh, just as I showed you in the prior video, where it's bumping up against resistance right now. 
gold right now has come back. It's up five bucks after falling as low as twelve twenty seven ten. It's now trading at twelve thirty three seventy. Silver got as low as sixteen twenty nine and it now has recovered. It's up almost ten cents at sixteen dollars and forty cents. Natural gas holding that three twenty ish line at three twenty right now. Uh, so it's it's holding. It got as low as three eighteen. But we're holding the holding the line here at the 320. All right, let's see here. Moving along, let's take a look at the pulse wave price triggers now. See what we got going on. All right. Because we are, let's see here. All right, my uh, thing just went out, so let me bring that beat back. Charge this one out. All right, while that's reloading, let's just get into the... Uh, We'll get into our crash alerts first. Now, today is Take Back Friday, so please take note of that. Anything that has been down most of the week should get a bounce today. Anything that's been strong all week should get a, a slight pullback, profit-taking ahead of the weekend. All right, so that's what we mean when we say Take Back Friday. That's what a Take Back Friday is. Take Back Friday means that people will have made nice coin throughout the week, would like to go home with some money in their back pocket. All right, it's not always the case, but nine times out of 10 it is. Okay, crash alerts today is something you don't want to hear. We got crash alerts today in JNUG and Nugget. All right, they've both been in a well-established downtrend and they have positive swing VIXs. A positive swing VIX within a uh, security rated 70, which is a high rating within a trend. Chances are, are you're either going to be in a corrective mode on the day or setting up for the next leg down for the day. Then at the way these miners have been moving, I'm going to venture out to say, because it's take back Friday, that this positive swing VIX is going to set up for a continuation bounce off of the lows. So I'm in that camp. But because we got that crash alert, we could see a test of the overnight lows first before bouncing. So the morning is what I see the, the pullback to test the overnight supports, followed by a bounce in the afternoon and we probably rally into the close. That's the way that I would read this. Now, of course, there's a flip side of that coin, which is the crash alerts play out and the markets don't get enough momentum on the opposite side to forge any type of real recovery or bounce. And we end lower for the day. So we're going to have to watch our price levels to make those uh, agitations. Just like I showed you in the live trading video during the FOMC day. I showed you and pointed out to you in advance where the support and resistance lines were as well as the capitulation lines. And when those played out, you saw that the market moved heavily in my favor. And it's not magic, it's just knowing in advance where these uh, intraday support and resistance lines are. They are not visible with a chart, and I think I have pointed that out numerous times. You are not going to see it. These are predetermined course in advance. Therefore, we're um, held hostage by what happens in the news. A war could break out. Anything could happen. And it doesn't matter because those intraday support and resistance areas are in full effect. And as long as you are cherry picking those and running the bank's stops 
you will be put and placed in the right side of the market. It should be noted that your JNUG and your Nugget are far removed from the market. Your entry price triggers are far removed from the market. Therefore, you will have to wait until this thing plays out. If there is a bounce today, it will probably be not as significant. So that's how you read these two lines completely. They are not significant. All right. As far as key reversal days or anything like that, if you do get a bounce, like I said, um, it's not going to be something that you're going to want to try to participate in. And that brings us to another Take Back Friday rule. With Take Back Friday, we do not put on new positions, typically. There are exceptions to that rule. One of the exceptions to that rule is when there are you know, dire circumstances in play. For instance, let's say there was some big meeting or something going down over the weekend. Because we know that uh, political shenanigans love to take place over the weekends when everyone is handcuffed with both hands tied behind our backs because the markets are closed. There's nothing you can do. You can't react. So what I typically would do from time to time is go home with something in my back pocket, meaning I would go in, uh oh, I'm going to say this, so oh, it pains me to say it. I would go home sometimes with put options on the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow. I sure would. I would go home with some put options. Reason being is because the risk was low but the reward if something broke off was going to be absolutely high. And then, of course, when Monday morning rolled around, if nothing, if nothing jumped off, I would simply unwind the positions and break even, basically. No picky. But it was just something to do. And I would do that. Or I would go in and I would short the S&P, NASDAQ, or Dow outright on the equity side or even the future side, and then just hold those positions with a tight stop. And if nothing jumped off when Monday came around, I would unwind the positions, no biggie. So again, I'm not telling you guys to do that. I'm just saying those are some of the strategies that I would employ from time to time based on the situation. All right, so let's see here. Let me move on to the next level here. All right. Now, as you guys know, in the trading room, as far as open positions go, I'm still holding uh, the natural gas along the U-gas. And I did enter short into the NASDAQ 100 yesterday. Looking at today's uh, pulse wave price triggers, we have a negative swing VIX on the momentum side for the NASDAQ 100. Yesterday was a, a crash alert. Today is a negative swing VIX. So either this negative swing VIX is going to turn into a full-blown correction, or it's going to be used as, as a point of rally. We won't know until the day kicks off, but needless to say, I'm still riding this one to see where it takes me. Let's pull up a chart here. See what we got. All right, see, just looking at this, you're not going to necessarily be able to pick all this up on the chart. Some things you can. Like, even though it's maintaining um, its uh, momentum right now, it's barely hanging on. It's riding that. Normally, when it rides like that, you get a situation like this one right here. Let me show you. See how it was riding the momentum line? And then we did get a pullback, albeit not too significant, but a pullback nonetheless that paid us. All right. Then the market recovered the momentum and began to set up for a bounce. And then that's when we got the rallies into new highs. 
So that's kind of what I see happening now, except for this one is a little bit different because we had significant liftoff and now we're beginning to uh, kind of wane a little bit. So I'm thinking this one has a little bit more um, power in it. And we could get somewhere down here in the 134, 135-ish range on a pullback. I don't see a close down here. I see an intraday spike with a reversal setting up for the next leg up. I'm trying to participate in this correction, in this small correction, and then quickly reverse myself into the next leg up once that trade develops. So sometimes you get a, you get a little ahead of the curve here. So we'll see what happens. Now on the defensive end, I am prepared to stop and reverse the trade if wrong. If proven wrong today, I am, I am prepared to do that. And I will do that. I will simply stop and reverse this trade and be on my merry way. All right, that, for those of you who are listening in on YouTube Live, first of all, welcome. Um, I hope that my voice is coming through okay. It's my first time ever doing this. Um, I figured I was going to try it for the first time and see what's what. Um, and it saves me a lot of work, too, so that the, uh, the audio-only version can be live for you guys that uh, follow us on YouTube. And of course, it's a way for you to see what we do and how we do it. All right, moving right along here. Let's see. Those were our notable uh, crash alerts. I do have one on the US dollar also, ticker symbol UUP. So this pullback in the dollar may not be um, over with yet. I'm seeing that uh, we do have a, an overbought situation, meaning that um, the intraday bounce that the market was seeing on that strength will probably be setting up for the next leg down. So we're going to get deeper into the 98 handle uh, for the dollar index, which means that uh, the UUP should get into the lower $25 range. Somewhere around the 25 teens is more likely on the short term. If proven wrong, you would need to be nimble and to be quick, obviously, and be prepared to um, stop and reverse yourself. All right, question is... Does that mean that the yen will move down as well? Nine times out of 10, the answer to that question would be absolutely yes. But, so I did say but, let's take a look. Let's not guess, let's see. Going to the Forex tab on the weekly pulse wave price triggers, what do you see? Da -da 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 -da. A crash alert. For the Japanese yen. Mm. And the thing about it, though, is that the, um, the momentum is showing a possible stop run topside. So let's pull this up real quick. So you're probably going to get that stop run and then that quick intraday reverse. Let's see here. Um, Pull this yen up. See how it's moving so far. Ah, it is playing out a little bit. Yep, it is. This is something you can't make this stuff up, people. <laughs> okay, here's your daily. Right, you can see it's uh, pretty much rolling over here. Right, but what did I just finish saying? I said you're probably going to get that intraday pop. It's going to run the stops on the top side first. And look, look at your intraday chart here at the bottom uh, right, hand, right hand side of the screen. What's happening? Running. Running the stops up here. Running the weak shorts. And now it's ready to roll back over again. It's going to roll over. That's what I see happening here. Rolling over. Interesting, isn't it? The way these things play out. You see your downtrend channel here on your intraday four-hour chart? Look at that. You set up the short here, was getting ready to do it here, but it, it reversed on you. That's a stop run. 
Now I think it's ready after it's done, it's finished at 61.8% retracement. Now it's ready to roll over. So be prepared for the yen to roll over. I'm, I'm just saying. All right, now, are there exceptions to this rule? Yeah. If more liquidations start coming in, it could give it another lift up to somewhere within the mid 112 handle. All right, right now you're almost there at 112.42, but you could run up to that 112.64 ish just to touch those stops that are hanging out right there before rolling over again. So just watch out for that. If you're short, be prepared for that. It may stop you out, and then you're going to have to get back in at, at pulse wave price trigger to catch the the downdraft. All right? You follow me with that? Okay. That's where I'm at with that. Now, if there's a significant burst when it gets up here and the momentum picks up, that you have to get ready, be ready to reverse your trade because then it's going to make a run and try to get back out of the Kumo cloud and get within the higher end of this range here. So you got to watch your one hour chart for clues and signals on when that's happening. If it were me, what I would, what I would be doing right now is I would have already placed my, my trades anyway. I would already be in this. I'll probably already be short right now. Yeah, according to the, the price triggers, I'll be short right now. And I'll be the one holding this, to, you know, waiting for this, this burst, ready to stop and reverse if I had to. So this is one of those plays. All right, the next question is, then gold will tank further. More than likely, yep, let's pull up the gold and take a look-see. All right, we're, okay, yeah, see, this, this is looking really, really bad from a bullish argument. Okay. First things first, let's break this goal down. As you see here on the daily chart, this little pop, this failed rally set up the next leg down, right? Now it's trying to do the same thing again. The only thing here is on this daily chart, we're starting to ride the floor here. And we do have these significant ramps, but the ramps are far out. All right, you got a little pop here, but the significant ones are way out. So this thing is probably going to consolidate and just whipsaw around for a while before trying to rally again. Now... You do have this momentum to deal with at 1243.90. A close above 1243.90 today would put an end to the current downtrend and would have it consolidate top side of the Kumo cloud. However, failure to get back and regain that momentum is going to set up, excuse me, the next leg down. What cues do we have to suggest that it's not ready? to try to lock back in good, you know, positive momentum. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, you come down here to your intraday chart. You can see now we're turning red. It's starting to look like it, it may roll over here. It gained some positive momentum here. But on your four-hour chart, you're going to need to close above 1233. Failure to do that would accelerate us back down. On your one-hour chart, you can already see how it's lost it's bullish momentum or retracement momentum. All right, you, you've never pulled back from the initial spike up. And this uh, this was your, your, your midnight bar. All right, you had a nice run up and it has not corrected any of that, but now it's starting to roll over. All right, so I think we're going to come down to around the 1230, which is about, we'll probably fall another, another three bucks, right? And then that's, this is going to be the dividing line, the 12, 30, 20. At that point, you're probably going to get a head fake. All right, shorts will jump in and say, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's rolling over, and then it bounces back up and rocks back in again. So be careful on this one. Uh, looking at today's sheet, hold on, I have to, let me see, let me reopen that one. 
put on it. Okay, here we go. All right, on today's sheet, we do have, and this is the this is the funny part. Based on today's sheet, believe it or not, we have a positive swing VIX. All right, and be that as it may, we still show that momentum belongs to the Bears right now. It should be noted that this positive swing VIX was based on the price action yesterday here. That's where the swing VIX reading is coming from here, not here. The positive swing VIX warning was warning of this green bar. And that's what you got. See what I said, how you can't base the algorithmic aspect of trading solely on chart analysis alone because you're not going to be able to see and pick up what's happening in the market depth. You can't see what's happening in the options market. You can't see. You can't see. This is not showing you any of that. Only this, the intraday price action. This is where this is. Looking at these charts don't even tell you. You can't see it. All right. So, okay, yeah, DB just pointed out that um, if the uh, if the yen goes down, then normally gold goes up. So he's pointing out the inverse relationship that he has noticed between the pairs here, and there's a good argument and a good point for that. And so, but the only thing with the correlations is that they they tend to be fickle. And they tend to break down on a on a dime, turn on a dime without warning or notice. And that's because of the bots. Sometimes the bots get out of control, man, and they just do whatever they want to do. They could care less about, um, you know, correlations and things of that nature. That's why we have days where the bonds are down, the stock market's down, you know, gold will be down, the dollar will be down. You'd be like, what in the world is happening? That's because they're the machines are bugging. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's see, so look at the uh, euro. Let's pull up the euro. All right, looking at the euro right now. Oh, it's looking like it's about to fall out of bed, man. Big time. All right, on your daily chart, here you can see it's starting to pull back. I'm not too worried from a bull argument just yet because it's above the momentum of 109.53. As long as it closes above 109.53 today, it maintains its bullish momentum. A close below that would spell trouble. On an intraday chart, you can see how you have been pulling back big time. All right, this is a microscope view of this. So this is showing you what's been happening on the intraday price action. All right. So usually an arcing situation like this where you lose momentum does start to pile in the short and get us down to here. All right. That's what this looks like. All right. So this, the intraday price action is a little troubling. The daily perspective, no, but on the intraday, this this one here is troubling. This is showing that this thing could really gain some momentum, especially if the Fed starts to intervene in that dollar. So I would put out a special alert in the euro and say, uh, beware of the Fed entering the market like a PPT situation. Um, they could very well do that. It should also be noted that we do have a positive swing VIX in the dollar. We got a positive swing VIX on the um, on the index. Now I know I showed you UUP earlier, and on the UUP we have a situation of some overboughtness. 
So with that being said, uh, it's kind of a iffy, iffy. We got a positive swing VIX still in the UUP as well, but then we got that possible sign of a pullback. And remember what I told you, I think equities are better priced than futures. So with that being said, that's why there's an argument to say that this euro may be a little safe and that the momentum may not pick up here, but you can clearly see how you lost this. This is troubling because I'm going to show you what this looks like real quick. This is a this is analogous to what happened in gold. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to pull this up. See this arc? Every time you arc, you cascade and you pick up on that momentum. Same kind of thing was happening here. You, you can't really see it that much here, but it's the same arcing topping pattern. On the weekly chart, you can. See, look at that. See that arcing pattern? It's the same thing. All right? This is what I see potentially happening in this euro. All right, so watch this euro. Watch this euro. Watch it carefully. All right. Here are your cues for you that are in this euro, whether you're long or short. Here's something to watch. If the overnight low of 109.76 gets taken out, then you know what's coming. All right. You know what's coming. All right, let's look at some notable rally alerts for the day. Uh, that'll be fun here. Let's see. Let me get out of this and go over here. And by the way, I'm, I'm on the in play tab because that's where I live. Okay. We do have a rally alert in good old dry ships. Dry ships has a rally alert. It sure do. Um... But we need to have a chat. Okay. As you know, we finally, finally, finally got some um, some some price trigger entries and whatnot. Now, all of a sudden, the thing decided it wants to pull back. So, with that being said, we're back to sidelines now on the dry ships. Now, today it does have a rally alert on it, but system's not buying it, all right? System is chilling on your dry ships for today. All right, dust has a rally alert on it. So it's suggesting that the gold may pull back further. Uh, let's see here, your yen on the equity side, ticker symbol FXY has a rally alert. All right, so you're going to want to watch that one, but price triggers are far removed from the market. Uh, well, how, how you pronounce this? Zellum? It's uh, X-Y-L-E-M, as in Mary. This one has a rally alert. This one looks kind of serious, too. Um... Let me pull this chart up. I might need to take a look at this one myself. Let's see. This is XLY is the ticker. All right. Let's pull this. Oh, wow. So what the system is picking up is that the initial thrust from yesterday had a huge rally yesterday. It's saying that this is only the beginning, and we're getting a rally alert which means that the prior high of $52.44, the market is gunning for that, and that it's probably going to take that out. So what else do we got? We got a ramp here. Intraday chart, same thing. Exploding above the Kumo cloud on both the hourly and four-hour chart. Weekly chart is also green. What this is suggesting is that we have back and filled from the gap that we created on the week of uh, April the 24th. We've now successfully back and filled that gap. 
And this market is showing that it is ready to take off. So with that being said here in the overnight market, we got as high as 5160. Ladies and gentlemen, this red alert rally alert looks delicious. That's all I can say on that. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and follow the price triggers on this one. So I think I'm going to add this one to the shopping list for today. This will be one of the ones that I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump on. I know the rule. I know you're going to point out, hey, you said you don't initiate new trades positions on Friday, blah, blah, blah. Yes, that is true. But there are always exceptions to a rule, which I also pointed out. This one, the exception is because if you look at the chart here, you can see clearly that this market is in an explosive uptrend, and we did pull back and fill an important gap. So this one is a great candidate uh, for a operation, and I'm going to operate. All right. Let's see here. We got some other notables here. Uh, let's see. Oversold markets ready to bounce. Canadian dollar, ticker symbol FXC. Miners, GDX and GDXJ. GDX and GDXJ have oversolds that uh, we need to take a look at because they may bookie. Um, I don't think you're going to get it, though. Not in the GDXJ. GDX, I don't think it's going to trigger either. I think we may get a bounce today with these positive swing VIX signals, but that's about it. Um, GDX, though, I mean, it's still in a downtrend, but it's not as powerful of a downtrend as your GDXJ. GDXJ has a 70 rating for the day. So it's, it's downtrend is locked the heck in. GDX only has a 50 rating. All right. So it's it's in a weak up it's in a weak downtrend. It's not as strong and pronounced as your GDXJ. Uh, a ranking of 70 for a security is the highest ranking. So it's getting a, a ranking of 70 in the downtrend column. That is mad super bearish still. Okay. J Nug and JDST, I'm sorry, J Nug and Nugget also have um, oversold rally alerts, but they also have crash alerts. The crash alert is stronger than the rally alert. We got a rating of 40 on the alerts on the rally alert side with a 911 rating on the crash alert side. 911 alerts are more pronounced and more serious than ratings of 40. Therefore, uh, the market is favoring the downside still on the J Nug and the Nugget even if GDX and GDXJ bounce today. All right, yeah, and that uptrend, yeah, someone just pointed out the uptrend column on the GDX and GDXJ and the JNUG and the Nugget is a zero. We have a zero rating, which means we have absolutely no kind of an uptrend clue, which is correct, but all we have is this oversold signal. So the market is bottoming, if you will, all right, when you see a situation like this where you don't have a uptrend ranking at all, but you have a positive momentum scenario, that's letting you know that it's possible the market is rallying, um, bottoming out. So a reading of 40 in the uptrend column, if, just to recall, is a bottoming out market. A reading of 40 in the negative momentum column is a topping out. All right, just remember that. 40 in your a 40 reading is bottoming or topping out patterns. I repeat, 40 rankings in your momentum columns are bottoming and topping out patterns. So that's what you're looking at. You're looking for this thing to bottom out. So it looks like the miners may be putting in a bottom. All right, we'll see today if that is the case. All right. So if they reverse today on Take Back Friday, that means short-term bottom is in place, and we should get carryover into Monday and Tuesday, okay? 
if however we put in a new low meaning ie we take out the overnight lows then guess what it's not ready yet it's still building that process we'll have to give it another day or two to see what happens uh, let's see a comment there was a nice pop in gdx j j nug in the pre-market but it seems to be over yeah i pointed that out earlier exactly yeah that's that's what i was pointing out so it's just it's just not looking good the miners i mean there we got a bottoming signal which is good all right remember one more thing too you guys if you remember from the academy the the system tends to lead the market anywhere from three to five days out and on the weekly patterns it's three to five weeks out that means the system's already three to three to five bars ahead in the future all right call it predictive programming call it whatever you want just remember from the academy the system leads the market three to five bars out all right okay uh let's see someone on youtube is asking about the healthcare sector okay let's see here the let me pull that up for you. I can find out what I did with it. Hold on. Oh, I know. Here we go. All right. The healthcare sector has been placed under the Illuminati index. All right. Because it is being used as a political pawn. So we have to look at that. And we can't ignore it. So it's that's what it is. So let me find out where it is let's see did i put it on the illuminati index no it looks like i didn't i need to so hold on uh in the meantime in between time let's go to we'll go here just have to find out where i put it ah here we go all right for the healthcare situation this is where you're going to want to go ticker symbol x l v as in victor that is your select uh sector healthcare spider etf right now it has been in a locked in bull market it has a rating today of 70 and we have uh good positive momentum so this one is still looking bullish however we do have a topping out signal on the negative momentum column we have what is called a 40 reading or rating therefore this market is showing signs of topping out all right now sometimes it doesn't happen right away sometimes like i said the system will lead the market three to five bars out so it's letting us know that we're getting signs now of topping out looking at the daily chart you'd be like no way jose where do you see resistance no it's not happening you're wrong but when you look down here in the left corner you see that this system is not wrong where did we top out at? We topped out on the week of March the 13th, 2017, when we hit an intraday high of $76.75. Based on yesterday's trading, we topped out at $76.01. Therefore, there is a chance that this overhead resistance is going to play out and the market will not be able to break through top side however we got good momentum so let's deal with that first as long as the market can close above 75 dollars and 55 cents today this bullish complexion is still smiling a close below that would open the door to a significant correction first stop is 74 dollars and 94 cents and the initial target long term or longer term target within the correction is 74 dollars and 22 cents all right 
So you're looking at roughly anywhere. You're looking at from anywhere from a buck fifty to two bucks on the table on a correction. All right, initially that's what you're looking for. One and a half to two bucks on a correction if it manifests today. So that's what we're looking at on your uh, healthcare sector. And then I use the select spider ticker symbol XLV as in Victor. Did that answer your question, sir, on YouTube about that healthcare sector? Hopefully it did. All right. Any more questions? You can open this up now to the question answer section. Anyone have any questions? Want me to look at anything or want to look at any of the signals on today's price triggers? Going once, going twice. It sure will be nice. Anybody? What we got? All right, good. That's good. That means that I did a thorough job, hopefully. Or that I suck bricks and you can't stand to hear my voice any longer and you just want this to be over. <laughs> all right, it's all good. Hey, thank you guys for the continued support. Uh, please remember to rate uh, and share this with friends and all that good stuff. All right. Oh, we, oh here, come the, here come the questions rolling in. All right, all and that. Here we go. Let's look at that oil. All right, we're going to start off with the futures. Ticker symbol is Q as in Qbert, M as in Mary, QM. I like the minis. I love the e-minis. So that's the e-mini oil. The big, bad, nasty oil is ticker symbol C as in Charlie, L as in Lima. That's the big crude oil futures. All right, you can see this spike on the daily chart. Everybody see the spike? All right. That is considered, a, if we were to close right here, right now, this would classify as a pointer. This is a pointer. Remember from the Learning Academy that pointers are indiscriminate of color. All right, pointers don't see color. They don't care if it's green, if it's a green bar or a red bar, it doesn't matter if it closes up or closes down, it is irrelevant. The pointer is significant. Those of you who are still non believers in the pointer, remember in the Learning Academy, we talked about what pointers are and how they're just as significant as gaps, and how you can take them to the bank and use them as certificates of deposit. The last pointer was here. Next pointer was here, and then you got a third warning here. Look at the line. What happened? Drawn to the exact date and moment. Look at the line. Follow it with your eye to the far right-hand side. Do you see where it corresponds to the tip of the blue momentum line? Do you see that? Do you see that? Can you dig it? Come on, you can't make this stuff up, people. Come on, am, am I a lunatic or do I know what I'm talking about? Follow, follow, follow the, the crosshairs on the cursor, you guys. Come on, go to the far right-hand side. What do you see? Is it not corresponding to the momentum of today so far to a T? Yes or no? Look at that. Is that not corresponding with the key support? Did the market not respond to those pointers? Those pointers are pointing where? They're not pointing up. They're pointing down. What did the market end up doing after it did all that other hoopla? What did it do? It came back. Remember, pointers point the way, folks. All right? Little Johnny always comes, comes back home. Don't ever forget that. Johnny comes home. It's what he do. It's what he does. All right? Johnny came home. Boom. And here we are. All right? So, on an intraday basis, we have, we came off the low of 43.65. We have bounced significantly now. And I'm going to make an argument that we're about to come back down and test these lows 
sometime this morning. Here we go. Riding that line. Riding the line. All right. Let's see if I can move this over. We haven't been back above the intermediate trend line resistance in a while. And the last time we got up here, this is what happened. Failure. All things being equal, I see more failure. Roll over is what I'm seeing. Setting up for the next leg down in your crude oil. All right? I don't think it's ready to do anything just yet. But let's see. Let's go back. I know we covered this before, but let me just go back one more again and see. What's up with the, what does the system say? Uh, okay. On the crude oil, we do have a, oh, okay. System is saying that we are bottoming out. We're bottoming out in the crude. We're finding a bottom. We're at the lower end of the range. We've extended the range, and it looks like it wants to get up and go. Wants to giddy up. Now, entry points are far removed from the market. Therefore, this one, you would just be watching and waiting on the sidelines. You would not be participating on this one. Uh, you would be liquidating your short. That's what you would be doing right now. If you are short this market, you would have seen significant points this morning. And then on this reversal, you'll be getting out of the market, basically. All right, you'll be looking to get out. Or at least tighten your stop way up on this crude oil future one. All right, how does it spill over to the OIH that we like to trade on the equity side? If you come over here and look. And not as significant on the turnaround as the crude oil futures, okay? Here we are. All right. Now, all things being equal. This one has not, um, I don't think this one has opened for pre-market trading yet. Yep, no, it hasn't. This is still showing yesterday's data. So on this one, we'll see how it opens up, but all things being equal, this one's going to need to close about $27.40 to put it into the downtrend. Let's see. Okay, yeah, DV just made a, a notation in, in the trading room, uh, just reminding everyone that the uh, the column, he's updated the column notes with bottoming and topping, and we'll post it in the room. Thank you, DV. I appreciate that. Yeah, so, because I think that's going to help people, you know, be a guidepost for you guys significantly. All right, YouTube just asked about NAC. So let's look at Nick NAC Paddywhack. I have not operated in NAC in some time now. I'm just waiting, watching and waiting in the shadows, lurking. I'm the jerk hanging on a tree limb, dressed in camouflage with a high-powered hunting rifle, ready to shoot Bambi's mother. That's me. I'm, I'm that jerk. All right, knick-knack paddywhack. Let's see what the system has to say. About this one, let's see. Alrighty, okay. This one's kind of wide open. This is this is a wide open one. Okay, on the trend side, all right. You have a reading of fifty on the downtrend column because it's saying that overall the long term trend favors the bears, not the bulls. However, the short term trend goes to the bulls because we have a, a rating of eighteen on the uptrend column, meaning that. This market has been in a uh, retracement off of the lows, all right? It's been retracing off the bear market lows, okay? And under our momentum columns, it shows that although we are locked in on this corrective bounce off the lows, we have recently given up momentum because we have a three rating in the negative momentum column. We've given up momentum. You can clearly see that on the chart. We're trading below the blue momentum line on the daily chart. You need to close above 152 today to relock that momentum in. In addition to that, our entry point is 
far removed from the market. Therefore, this is a stay out. If you're long, then you stay long and you keep moving your stops to trail your position. Or you can use no stops. You know the rules with stocks trading below five bucks. Um, I don't use stops with stocks trading below five bucks. What's the point? Uh, so if, if you're in this trade, you're married to it. This is basically a, <laughs> this is basically a buy and hold. Uh, just using that as an as an analogy. You know, we don't buy and hold, but in situations like this, it basically is that you're holding it until you can turn a profit. Uh, but let me give you some some hope. Let me give you some hopium, some encouragement. You do have these mad, crazy ramps coming up on your weekly chart. Look at that. Mad, crazy staircase ramps coming up. That should help get this market back in play again. And I'm looking at somewhere around, you know, somewhere above the $2 mark. I think $2 is going to become the new support once that momentum really gets building. All right, $2 is going to be your new support. Let's look at what happened in the pre-market. Shall we? Okay. Uh, or I should say extended trading hours, really. All right. We spiked up to 193, folks. That's a significant move. That is a significant move. All right. But it is now pulled back to 174. All right. That's our current bar, 174. So we'll see if it can hold. All right. On the Four hour chart intraday, you're going to need to maintain 164. As long as the market does not close below 164 on the four hour chart, you get to maintain your bullish momentum. However, you still need to close today above 152 to set up the rally mode for next week in your knick knack patty whack. All right, hopefully that answers the questions on oil and knack. Do I have any more questions? Anybody? Okay, someone in the trading room just posted that the NAC rally is based on news, and they posted a link. All right, so interesting. All right, that there, there you have it. Uh, I can't stress enough that the pulse wave price trigger is nowhere near the market. <laughs> so the system is still sidelined on this particular ticker. All right. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, YouTube, what do you think? You think um, you think this was I right, doing the, the live uh, audio joint instead of um, posting it after the fact? That way you get to ask questions and chime in, too. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, you do know, YouTube, that you can also, uh, instead of just, you know, hearing the quote-unquote radio broadcast, you can... Come on to the trading room, and then that way you can see the charts, you can see the post wave price triggers, and not just hear, but be able to do and make make a little bit of coin for yourself. Uh, also, it gives you access to the Learning Academy. All right, and you can download those learning videos. All right, you don't just watch them online; you can download them and save them for later. You also have access to the Premium Trading Room, and you get access to uh, to live coaching during the trading day. And you're surrounded by traders from all over the world. So come on, invest in yourself. We'd love to have you. All right, postwavetrading.com, folks, where you can learn how to trade and provide an extra stream of income for you and your family. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to say everyone have a blessed and happy weekend and peace. Trading room, I'll holler at you in a little bit. Let's see here.